Hey, this is Andrew Brown and welcome to the AWS Cloud Project Bootcamp in another video for week one where we're gonna catch up on some stuff we were not able to do um, during the live stream. And so this is just kind of additional stuff I wanna do with Docker Composer or Docker Compose. Um, I did do the API stuff first. I'm going to um, place this in the week one React Flask coding thing because I just don't wanna keep making tons of branches. I mean, I suppose I can make another branch. Um, hmm. Uh, I guess we can, sure, why not? Okay, I said I wasn't going to, but we are. So I'm gonna go here and make a new branch. You do not make branches, you do everything in main. It's too much work for me. If you're doing branches, I will not check your branches. You will not get marked for stuff if they're outside of there. So make sure you do them in main. I'm doing them in branches to make it easier for you to find the code to follow along. So I'm gonna go to the React Flask coding example. I'm gonna say week one, cause I'm just trying to build off the stuff that I'm doing. Week one, um, uh, add Postgres and DynamoDB. So those are two things I want to add. I'm going to create those. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and then now open this up. So we'll go here to here and again you're doing a main i'm doing it here because i'm trying to show you oops that's the wrong branch because i'm trying to um keep this history here for you so this is going to be at postgres there doesn't organize in the way that i thought it would but that's fine so we'll go here and hit enter and what i want to do is make my way over to uh, week one where the instructions actually exist into week one here and so down below, there was a couple things that I wanted to install with you. So we have Postgres and DynamoDB. Um, so these are pretty straightforward. We're basically gonna copy paste these into our, uh, into our um, composer file or com Docker compose file, and then just make sure they're working. And we will double check them when we get closer to those two weeks, but anything we can do upfront get out of the way so we can focus on stuff in the future, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna type in clear here, and we're gonna close this tab, and I'm gonna open up my Docker Compose file. I'm gonna go down here, and you can see we have services here. It's not highlighting YAML, I don't know why, I do not like that. I'm gonna type in YAML. Can I get some coloring in here? We'll go back to this file here. Still not coloring it. Is this installed? Okay. Well, it's refusing to give color. I don't know if it's because it's not named uh, YAM, AL, let's find out. Nope. Uh, sometimes the naming of this file matters, but for whatever reason, we're not getting coloring today. That's totally fine. We're gonna go here. We're gonna copy DynamoDB local, and we're just gonna paste it in below, allow. And then we're gonna to go to uh, this one here, the DB one, and we will go ahead and paste it here. And then I need to grab this volume here and we will place this down here. Now I know if James and Edie were here, they could be a, a lot more articulate about these things, but um, I'm just gonna do the best I can here. Like I know how they work, I just don't have the technical uh, language for this. But the idea is that we have a volume and this one is we are referencing a volume up here. Um, uh, for this one is for the database. So here is here. So we're this maps down to here and we're saying to use the driver local, meaning that we're going to be storing the database locally on this machine. Um, which makes sense there. Then DynamoDB local here, we are mapping uh, dot docker DynamoDB to uh, this directory so that we're replicating data over. Um, the point is, is that we can work with these two databases. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, now, if we are to uh, do Docker compose up, it should start those two up. And then we can see how we can interact with um, those two. We'll just give it a moment there. So I just wanna pull up what DynamoDB local is first, DynamoDB local. And if I go here to the first page, it was documentation. They show you 
the Docker code, this is pretty much the exact same thing. It's nearly identical. There's some more information here, like access keys and stuff like that, but I believe I just copied this one here and that was enough. So DynamoDB Local is a way of running uh, an emulation of DynamoDB um, so that you can interact with it. It's a lot faster. We will learn about this in our DynamoDB work. So we just wanna make sure that that works. And then the other one is Postgres. Um, I don't know where I got the Postgres one from. I'm sure I just looked up Postgres and I found it. Here you can see it's setting the password is Postgres and password. I need to remember how do we connect to DynamoDB. So I'm gonna make a new tab here and I've done this before. So I'm gonna go find my repository where we have done this. And I'll bring this instructions forward here. Um, so I'm just gonna look this up for a second. I guess I made it a challenge in the 100 days of cloud. So all the instructions are there. And so here there was a Docker Compose up. We can put an item. Um, it was DynamoDB local. But how would it know to use the right API? Well, I think that has to do with the credentials that we use or in the input. Oh, here it is. We're pointing to localhost 8000. So I'm going to go back over here and I go check my ports. And we can see we have 4567, 4542, uh, 8000, and et cetera. Um, this is running on port 8000. So I'm going to make sure that all these ports are open with the exception of 43501, because that's something to do with Git pods and not, that has nothing to do with us. And so if I go back to terminal, we should have our AWS CLI installed, do we? Good. Um, and so we should be able to execute this command. So I'm gonna bring this over. If you don't know what this is, this is 100 days of cloud. This is my other community. And we have the challenge of DynamoDB local. And so we want to um, see if we can create these records. So I'm gonna see if I can first create a, a DynamoDB database. We're not gonna go through this right now because this is for the DynamoDB week. So I'll paste that in there, hit enter. And we'll see if it works. It appears that it has worked because it's spitting back stuff to us. I'm gonna hit Q to exit out of Vim, that Vim mode there, okay? Um, and so now what we can do is create an item. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll type in clear. Again, we will learn all this, the DynamoDB way. We just wanna make sure this works. So that uh, did not return any errors. In fact, it said it can super capacity, music 1.0, that is good. We can list our tables. Let's do that. That is good. Tells us we get back a table called music. We can scan for records. Um, here it says when scanning cannot do operations for a non-existent table. So the name must be different. Uh, it says items here. Let's just try music instead. So that's the query. Crudders crud. It's funny, the table is called crudders crud, but in the documentation there it's wrong. The table is called music. There we go. Um, so it looks like we are able to work with DynamoDB. Now let's go take a look at Postgres. So Postgres is started on um, port 5432. It's its default. Uh, in order to interact with Postgres, we need to have some kind of client or driver. Um, I don't have this in a 100 days cloud challenge, but I do have code laying around because we actually had to do this when we built the student portal. So I'm gonna go grab the code inside of that. And uh, it's just in our, this is the actual Rails application that your, the student portal is running on. If I go into the Gitpod YAML here, uh, Baco, who's floating around, you'll never see him or hear him, but uh, he figured this out, how to install the driver uh, very lightly in here. So to work with Postgres, you need to have a library, a client, the client library to interact with a server. Uh, it's not fun figuring this out, but we figured it out so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get the driver installed, but we're going to go and put this in our Gitpod YAML. So I'll go down here and I will paste that on in here like this. Okay. I'm going to go grab these instructions. Well, I don't really need to grab these instructions, but uh, I'll go here to this uh, week one and I'll edit it. I'll go all the way down to Postgres section and We'll say to install the Postgres client. Okay. Into Gitpod. And while we're here, I'll go grab the 100 days of cloud challenge for DynamoDB. Uh, example of using 
DynamoDB local. Okay, I'll commit those. That's gonna be in the notes for week one in the week one repo, so you have that stuff there. We'll go back over to here. Um, in the Skippod YAML, we can see we're installing the Postgres client with these three lines. I'm gonna copy each of these lines and paste them in. Update always takes a little bit of time, so we'll let that think. So the first one is that we're adding um, this GPG, so it's probably some kind of key in order for us to read from a remote repository. So here we are adding um, the Debian package for Postgres to our source list, so that way it knows where to look for it when we actually do an install. Uh, we did the update. I'm gonna go ahead and do the last line there. And so it shouldn't take too long to install. So it's 94% done, that's pretty fast. And now we have the Postgres client. If we type in PSQL, um, it now works, but it's saying a connection er uh, to server on socket failed to uh, work, no such file or directory. Is the server running locally, accepting connections to that socket? So we go over here and 5432 should be open. It says over here 5432. So I'm a bit uh, surprised, but um, give me a second to think here. I'll type in clear. We might have to do having new Postgres like this. Does that help? No. Why is it not seeing the client? Restart always, Postgres, Postgres, 5432, 5432. So that looks correct to me. Hmm. I'm going to stop Docker. looking for the Docker Compose file. So we will uh, do down and we'll try to spin it back up. It might be because it was already running so it did not know what to look for. I'm gonna do Docker up. So for us, this just normally works so I don't generally expect there to be any issues here. Uh, so it's back up. I'm gonna go back to the ports. They are open, 5432 is fine. I'm gonna type in, let me say space there. I'm going to make sure this is running. Five, the 3000 is not running, that's totally fine. We didn't do the uh, NPM install on it. We will do PSQL. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just close out. I mean, I'm gonna commit this, so add, uh, we don't want this file here. So before I do that, I'm gonna go over here and update my, I'm gonna make a new file called .git ignore. And we want to ignore this file. I don't wanna see that committed. So this is gonna be docker dynamodb like that. We'll add that, did that exclude it? Um, hmm. Not exactly, we'll type in clear, we'll do ls. It's this directory here. So I don't want a Docker directory like that. Maybe if I commit it first. I'm trying to get this file to vanish because we do not want to commit it. Uh, I'm going to minus that. Oh, now it's gone. Okay, so there we go. Um, install Docker and Postgres. We still need to confirm that our Postgres is working. I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna go back to the context. I'm going to reopen this in Gitpod because I don't trust it. So Gitpod is going to install it and then we will see if we can properly connect. So I've been working with this like every day for our student portal. So I don't expect there to be anything additional that has to be done here. I am seeing that these ports are being marked as uh, public, but that shouldn't matter again. Uh, we can also install the Postgres client to see if we can connect through that as well. We'll give it a moment. Okay. So that was installed pretty darn quick. It was CLI installed pretty darn quick. We'll say up on our Docker Compose. It, we are waiting for the Docker library to load here. Still not here, we'll wait a little bit. It's the slowest loading one. 
If we don't feel like waiting for that extension, sometimes that happens. Um, I'm just gonna go here and type in, I'm gonna make a, uh, a new bash terminal here. I'm gonna say docker compose up. It's showing up now, so it just takes some time to load. And we'll pull that and we'll see if our PSQL library is working. But yeah, it doesn't usually require anything fancy to get that working. While that is going, I'm gonna to go to the extension store. We're gonna type in Postgres. There is a lot of clients to read Postgres. I'm trying to remember the one that I was using. I think it is this one. I think so. So I'm gonna go here and Oh, is it already installed? If I go into my Gitpod YAML. Mm. I mean, it is showing up. So if you don't have this, you go here and just make sure you install this one. I'm gonna add it to the, um, to my Gitpod YAML file. So if I go here, you can say add to Gitpod YAML, because you might not see this. I might have it globally installed. So you should have one here called this in here, okay? And so that will install um, the database explorer here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna again try with Postgres. I wanna make sure Postgres is working. Go to your ports, make sure they're open. Open, open, open. Open. I'll go back here. I'm gonna type in PSQL. I don't know why that's happening. It should not be happening like that. Very common error for Postgres. It's because it's listing on port 5432, it should work. We'll go to our database explorer. I'm gonna say add. I'm gonna go here, go to Postgres. We're gonna say um, database connection. We actually don't have a database yet. So I'm gonna to try to do this without any database. This, the password is password. We're gonna to try to hit connect. It says a success, so here it is, Postgres. These are the standard tables that we expect to see. This is pretty common. So this is now working. Why the client isn't working is a different story. So give me back, uh, give me a moment, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so uh, my research has led saying that if you're using Postgres, you get this error, and this is a common error when it's listening to the socket. Uh, they're saying when you're using a Docker container, use the hyphen H flag or host flag and do local host because it's trying to look at the host machine as opposed to the container. We're gonna go back over to here. I'm gonna type in PSQL. I'm gonna try this to see if it works. Hyphen hyphen host, local host, double check. I think that's all we really need. Hit enter. Aha, there we go. Uh, it's asking for Gitpod user. That's totally fine. We'll do a hyphen capital U flag. We'll type in Postgres, hit enter. Now it's asking for the password. We'll type in password. We're in Postgres now backslash D, backslash T, or backslash uh, DL, uh, backslash L. There we go, list. I used to know my Postgres commands. I'm starting to forget them, but everything is like that. You're always relearning. Uh, as I said, I'm always relearning Docker commands for the last, I don't know how many years. But here we can see the default tables. If you can do that, we know it's working. Backslash Q to quit, and you're all good and set up. We'll go back here, double check here. I'm going to add um, database explorer to VS code. So there you go, we're pretty much set up. Um, we're in really good shape for next week. Um, I might add some additional videos around Docker because we were a little bit short for that kind of information. Um, but yeah, just make sure you commit all that stuff. Double check, make sure that your code is where you think it's supposed to be. Um, and I'll see you soon.